everyone. We did it. Welcome to our Facebook Live. <laughs> Facebook keeps changing on us every time. Every time. Um, and that's why we, every time, it's a different th- setup every time for Facebook uh, groups. And that mm-hmm. is why it took us a little bit to get started, just like last time. Um, so going forward, I think I just want to say, if I say our starting time is two, just assume it's two. <laughs> just assume it's only five minutes late. <laughs> just assume it. And if we start early, it's a nice surprise, right? There we go. I like that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, what's our topic? I can't see it on my phone. So That's our topic phone. is navigating the fine line between support and independence and homeschooling. Um, especially right. like, you know, in that sort of leading into uh, college time, you know, through through high school. Yeah. And I just want to say real quick, two things, a um, couple mm-hmm. announcements. One, I'm in England. And if anyone <laughs> has been with us for a while, <laughs> They know that when I'm in England, the it's the just internet is thin. terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I'm also somewhere else. I'm in a dorm room, <laughs> but your internet seems a little bit better. So if mine gets bad. Well, I would hope so. I would hope that the internet at a at a, an American college would be pretty decent. <laughs> I'm in the middle of beautiful English countryside, and it's absolutely gorgeous out here. Um, the I, bluebells are all blooming. <laughs> I, I'm in Massachusetts and I have to say it feels like peak spring today. Like it's like seventies and gorgeous and not Do you know this humid. is like I was telling uh my partner, this is like my fifth spring because we did all this traveling. Remember we had like a spring. Oh yeah, and we like did. A spring. Yeah. And then back home and then like <laughs> I've just had tons of springs this year. And this is a peak spring. Um so that's the first thing. Mm-hmm. Second thing is I just wanted to say because of our topic, we this fine line between these two mm-hmm. things is not always something that parents get right. And I never always got it right. I didn't always all. get it right either. Yeah, no, I definitely yeah. did not. <laughs> and it's kind of hard and it's different for every family and every kid mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. On circumstances. I think, I think that's a really key place to start actually that like, yeah, that some kids need more support and you should scaffold and do more for them. Like, I just think that's yeah. the case. Yeah. Yeah. Know your kid. Um, and finally, and we'll get right to it, but if you have any, I, if you want to add questions, you can add it either to the group or the post I mm-hmm. made today. And we have quite a lot of questions. So we will get to questions too. Yes. But Sarah, this was your idea. So what do you, this was your topic of choice. What do you want to say about it? Um. Okay. What do I want to say about it? Well, yeah. I, I think that it's just really rough. Like, I think that this is such a topic that's, ugh, I just think this is an important topic. I know right. I, you can tell that we got a little frazzled coming in. We're frazzled and we're I traveling. Think and... I know. I think it's an important topic. Um, I think that it's really hard to get right, as we were saying. I think that I've seen some parents, I've seen parents um, that we get frustrated with, you know, that we hear about or that we're talking to where we're like, wow, you're doing way too much for this student who is about like literally in a year or in two years or something yeah. is about to have to make a major decision themselves and right. also about to have to manage without you there. And right. so we're, we're looking at that and we're like, you're doing too much of this, you know? And then the flip side, sometimes we get frustrated with other parents and cause we're looking at it and it's like, you're not doing enough. Like, why are you letting your kid fall through the cracks? Like, you know, don't leave a kid in like a a college class where you see that they're failing. And then, and you're just like, well, that'll be a lesson they learn. It's like, whoa, that's, they're not, they're not adults yet. They're not college age yet. And you've, you had to sign to put them in that class. And yeah, and you know, they're the what's gonna happen from that is not good. Like it's not okay. Yeah. That's why you should always keep your eye on the drop day and the withdrawal day. Exactly. Have yes. your students' best interest at heart always. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, it is a fine line though. It is. And I think it's hard for parents, especially if you've been homeschooling for so long, because with homeschooling, you're super involved in your kid's life in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um and so it's hard to slowly let go of that control and everything mm-hmm. and to know what's the right thing to do. And then I think some parents want to make sure their kids are ready to get to college. So they really step back. And that's when it becomes too much. It's I mean, I think it's tough because I think, you know, it 
I think schools, especially when kids are younger, ask for the wrong kind of involvement sometimes. Like, you know, it becomes like a sort of, <laughs> there's sounds outside. Um, it becomes a sort <laughs> of contest, you know, where it's like, oh, my kid's going to have the cutest outfit in the pageant or my kid's going to, and it's supposed to be kid led, but the parents are yeah. doing like the science project Everything. or whatever, you know, and they're yeah. just like yeah. sort of taking over. I think what's nice about homeschooling is that like, you know, a lot of us, when our kids were younger, we're, we're it's like, oh, we get to learn with you. Oh, we get to do the art projects too. Oh, we get to, it's like fun. You know, the kid's having fun. We're having fun too. Like, this is part of how we got into this. And, then, yeah. you know, and so figuring out and, and it's, it's nice because we can sort of structure all these things for them where they're really doing more. We can take more time. We can, you know, I think it's awesome. Um, but then kids get to high school and it's like, okay, where's the line where, you know, are there ways to still do that and scaffold things versus like, you know, just yeah. leaving them adrift? <laughs> and, and is there still like that homeschool, like we talk to a lot of parents who they start high school and they still want that, like a few courses where they're really the teacher still and they're learning and together and everything that's magic. really nice they want some homeschool yeah. magic like it's you don't yeah. want to be like oh we were doing all these like unit studies and we took so many field trips and we did and then suddenly it's ninth grade nope you're on your own and you're doing homework and it's all written and it's not you know and so like that's not fun either that's not you know like that's not why you got into this either like even for high school like just because they're teenagers doesn't mean that has to stop Right. There's always something you can do with them. Mm -hmm. I will say it depends on the kid, though. Like my youngest, you know, he when he got into high school, he really just wanted all independent classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I honored that a bit. But we still did some stuff together. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. He's my youngest, though. <laughs> um, but I didn't leave him adrift, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. I was keeping my eye on him, even though he felt he had a ton of it. So what do you think? What do you think are some of the things that parents maybe get wrong about this or need some advice on? I think, so I think that it's better. I think that, first of all, I like what she said before, know your kid. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, kids who are neurodivergent who have executive yeah. functioning, you know, issue, like, you know, you may need to scaffold more, but then you need to focus on the scaffolding and not the sort of sweeping up the mess or the doing for them kind of thing like so yeah. you need to be you know helping them and taking the time because this is it's t even for like neurotypical kids it's time consuming to learn yeah. to organize yourself and do your work yeah. right and I yeah. this is not necessary I mean I, I definitely did not necessarily do a perfect job of this as a parent myself. So yeah, I get that. But yeah. like, you know, helping helping a student like learn a system, especially if it doesn't come naturally to them, um, to track their work and like get it done themselves. Um, and to sort of, you know, have deadlines because those are, you know, in you know, before high school, maybe you didn't have any deadlines ever, you know, depending on how you homeschooled. And that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. but you know, in college, your kid will have deadlines. And so you have to, you have to practice that in some way, even if it's not like every class has suddenly rigid deadlines. Right. Like, I don't think A you need to do them. that. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, and so I think, you know, helping them figure out how to manage those, that that's the focus, not like helping them do each assignment in order to get it in on the deadline. Like, so like, it's, it's like a, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you're it, focusing on the right things that really help them grow. Right. Yeah. The sort of yeah. underpinning long-term stuff, not the like, let's put this fire out and get this assignment done right now. Now, sometimes yeah. you have to do that too. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's, especially the, it's, if it's the mm -hmm. first few times they're coming up against a deadline and they don't yes. understand it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Wendy, I would say, oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, go no, ahead. no, 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 I, I, you. I was just going to say that one thing you can do as a parent is um, my oldest son, Trufo, uh, needed a lot of scaffolding and extra help and everything due to due to lots of different things. And his last year of homeschooling, he wanted to do an AP Lane course, which is a lot of work for him, especially. So what I did was actually uh, talk to lots of teachers who were teaching that. And I found a teacher who would really work with him 
So I was evolved, involved on the front end of that and found a teacher yeah. who could support his disabilities and everything. And he was really successful. And the funny thing is he and I are starting Moth Learning, this website. Oh, yeah. We have. And we're, yeah, mothlearning.com if anyone wants to check <laughs> it out. Anyway, Trufo is doing it with me. Um, and we were talking about favorite courses in high school that he did. And that was his number one favorite course. Oh. And I did not know that. I did not know that because the teacher worked with him so much individually and he felt really successful by the time he got through it. It was a lot of work for him. Mm -hmm. And by the time he got to Hamilton College, he felt like he could do all the writing there. So helping in that way, I think, helps students be prepared for college. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's, that part, I think, is really key. Like, you know, I think some people, sometimes I see parents, because this is the stage where you want your kid to be involved in the learning, right? Like every, you know, starting right, high school, right. like I would sit down with my kids and, you know, like in the, in the spring or whatever, and be like, okay, here's our options for these courses. Which ones do you want to do? And let's yeah. strategize and talk it through and, you know, have do all yeah. that, which I think is really yeah. good. I see sometimes parents, you know, let their kids make choices for on that front end, like you said, where I'm yeah. like, but you knew that was going to be not successful potentially. Like, and I'm not saying like, sometimes it's good. Like I, cause I also see it happen where the parent is like, I don't know if this is the best fit for you, but they let them try it because you've got to do that some too. But sometimes right. it's like, yeah. they're, it's like, but that's not, you know, you've got a kid who struggles with executive functioning and that's, a you know, a, you know, a class that has tons of little tiny pieces and super, super firm deadlines. Why is that the right fit? Why not do this other class, you know, where. And students don't always understand that. Yes, exactly. And so I do think, you know, as the, as the adults in this situation, because they are still kids, like, you know, they need to have a say, like, you don't want to just say like, oh, you're going to take these five things, you know, these, however many things at these places and, you know, we're going to use this yeah. and it's going to work this way. You've got to work with them. Like you have to have buy-in at this stage. If you don't, it yeah. will not work. <laughs> like, um, but you need to also sort of occasionally, like I, I sort of think of it like currency, like you only have so many of these cards where you say, that's not going to work for you. I am making the call that you can't do it that way. But I do think sometimes you should sort of keep those in your back pocket. It's like you've got a limited number and, you know, every once in a while you have to play it. So when do you think is the right time to kind of let a kid struggle and figure it out on their own? Ooh, so hard, right? <laughs> That's so, so hard. Um, Different for every kid. That's the first yes, thing. Yes, Definitely. I think you let them do it before dual enrollment at least once for sure. Yeah. And if they're not doing dual enrollment way before they go to college. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well before senior year. Yeah. 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 In a way that, you know, if they have a homeschool based course that you, you know, that you're doing at home, they definitely can fail a little bit there and figure things out. Oh yeah, you can, I mean, one thing that I feel like is a pattern that we've seen, which I kind of like as a pattern is like, a lot of the time students start out, they do math at home with their parents, you know, elementary math, and then middle school's kind of transition. And then they start doing like an online program and it's like, oh, right. it worked for pre-algebra, it worked for algebra one. And then suddenly and then like, there's a point like in geometry or algebra two where you get midway through the year and it's like, they've completed 12% of this program. <laughs> and the parents like, uh, you know, but I think that there's like a nice element of that where it's sort of like, okay, right you know, it's self-paced. And so, it, you know, you learn something. And so then there's a hard conversation at the end of the year, like, okay, what needs to change? And I think that's a good yeah. opportunity. So self-paced courses, actually, while I'm not a huge fan of them in a general sense, some of them are fine. And like, I do think they teach that lesson really well for, for kids. Yeah. Like, especially if one of the things you have to do is, you know, work over your whole summer to get caught up. So then, and then start a mm -hmm. whole different program in the fall. That's right. going to work better. <laughs> exactly. That, no that's one wants really to do a, a double math 
every day in the summer, right? It hurts. Right. Or to, yeah, to get, to give up your summer or to like Mm -hmm. lose a year of math. Like that's a, that's a bad lesson. Oh, see, that's one where I would say step in it, you know, like, okay, it's, you know, it's December and only 12% of this is finished. Like you need to step in as the parent and make a call. Like maybe they need to do one of these online math in a semester programs. Maybe they need to, maybe, maybe they're successful in other dual enrollment classes already and it's time to transition. Maybe, um, maybe you just need to be, you know, firm with the deadlines. Maybe you need to get a tutor who will be firm with the deadlines. Like, you know, there's lots of different things you can do. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, lots of different things. Okay, I am just looking. Uh, do you want to say anything else? I'm afraid I'm going to lose internet, so this is not going to be the- okay. Yeah, let's read the questions that are in the. <laughs> and so I thought I would read the questions. Yes, let me go to okay. my post. Okay, go for it. Um, okay, let me view my post. <laughs> All right, I, I have it too. To so some yeah, general. Okay, yeah. I'm just going to start with the first one on mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wait, maybe I should go down. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, I would love to hear some general info about FOSPA, financial aid, and merit aid. So this is completely unrelated. Some of them are related and some are. Yeah. Just general info maybe about some misconceptions and mistakes you have seen parents and students make or aid they often miss. This is a crazy time to be asking this question. I the FOSPA has might... been so bad this year. It's such a yeah. travesty. My, my son, who also, if you've been following our Facebook lives or anything know that my youngest has decided he's transferring this year much mm-hmm. against Farah's advice <laughs> she could not convince him not to apply um and so he applied to a bunch of schools and much to Farah and my amazement he's I, I'm not amazed I it just I don't know I, I just have to be blunt like I just didn't know the trans I don't know that much about transferring and so it's right, not right the stats are like harder I've to understand that's of, true you, yeah, yeah you've worked with more transfer students so we have I mean but yeah. you typically are the one and I just help with the essays or something but like I, I just, just it was harder to read because... the tea leaves because he was applying to some really big reaches <laughs> I was a little surprised only because he's so laid back about everything. So I, and yeah. I didn't see anything. I didn't see, he's traveling around the world right now on a, uh, a, a study abroad program, which is amazing. And if yes. anyone's looking for a study abroad program, he's been to four countries or three, New York. No, he started in New York. So four places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, studying human rights, which has been excellent. He's had the most amazing experience and he's coming to England in a week. So I can't wait to see him. But anyway, he has some of the college's due dates are May 15th and we don't have all the financial aid uh, packages at all. And that's because of the FAFSA delays. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, so I, I don't want to go into this one too much um, just because good news next month, that's our that's topic. Our topic. That's our <laughs> so topic we're going to talk month. about, we're going <laughs> to talk about how to think about money and general money in college in general um, yeah. with the wait, sh- should we say it in unison? We are not, we are not not uh, financial advice. yeah. advisors <laughs> yes. at all. Don't take no. anything we say as no. We know about the <laughs> colleges and how to think about where to apply and all of this how sort of target that. based yeah. how to target, how to target yes. schools, how to target and how to conceptualize. Situation. But yeah, yeah. They, yeah, exactly. But we don't know your financial situation, and we can't tell you how to we're organize. We're not planners. Your we're not financial planners or anything no, like that. Exactly. Definitely. Uh, but not. we are going to talk um, more about that because you there are there are ways to target institutional aid is the best aid to look for, and there's ways to target that. So. We'll talk a lot. More it is about always that the time. best aid, and mm-hmm. a lot of times families want to look for outside scholarships. And I'll just say that that takes a ton of time. Yeah. There's a lot of writing that students have to do with those applications. There's often essays and everything, and the yeah. payoff is very little. And then on yeah. top of that, some colleges may subtract that from what the the aid they're giving you. So yeah, they don't allow you to stack it, so then it's it's just pointless. It depend depending so on your financial situation. So yeah. we'll talk about my that biggest advice is to target the right type of colleges mm-hmm. yeah use those net price calculators but we'll talk about that that's a yep. really good topic that's why we're doing it okay um spin off of that all the schools that meet need i've ever seen listed are lottery schools do low income families have real options you know what we'll talk about that next time too i will say that it's yeah. really hard for low income families it really yeah. is yeah and yeah. um it, I have some really good thoughts on that. We were um, a low-income family. I'm a single parent. 
And when we first started this many years ago, when my oldest kids applied to college, we were in that situation. It's really tough. It's actually really hard. There are some things you can do though. So we'll talk about yeah. that next time. Okay, and there are options question. that are a little bit more. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. There's some step tier down options mm -hmm. that are a little easier to get in that give pretty good aid. Yeah. All right. Do you want to read the next one? Or do you want um, to yours are in a different order than mine. <laughs> okay. Let me um, do it. Okay. Go. Okay. Um, what about the situation when you have a neuro neurodiverse student and one of the reasons you decided to homeschool the student is to provide the support and scaffolding that the student lacked in private school? That's really important. That's what, yeah. I think, I mean, to me, that's why you focus on the support more and the front end stuff, like the sort of long term, like organization, executive functioning support, all of that stuff. And less on the sort of like, you know, and the front end, the choosing the right options. Um, I mean, I think that that, I think that that is applicable to all kinds of students, don't you? I do. I think that my biggest advice though with neurodiverse students or students with disabilities or anything, only because I, that was most of my kids, is that um, the best thing you can teach them during the high school years is how they can advocate for themselves. And that's a big lesson they really need to learn. And they need to have some confidence in that before going to college, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. So if you can push them in that way, in some sort of classes where they have to advocate and they have to learn to use their voice and they have to learn that they have a right to have accommodations and that mm -hmm. they're going to have to remind people sometimes that they mm -hmm. have that right and they have to learn to, to speak up for themselves. It's a really big lesson. I, I would say too, you know, it, it also some, I mean, it don't, us, the goal here is to on ramp to independence. Right. And so yeah. that ramp, the length of that ramp, the way that it looks is different for different kids. Like it's, yeah. you can, you know, and, and sometimes and it takes a lot longer, takes longer. Yep. And so, and the college search can look different and the, you know, your college plans can look different. Fifth, you know, fifth year is an option or a gap mm -hmm. year or a, you know, a community call. I mean, like there's tons of different options for that. And so you can adjust and think about that, um, you know, as you go, like, you know, the kids who are neurodivergent sometimes launch later and that's just, you know, that's fine. Nothing wrong with it at all. No, no, no. Mm -mm. But I think that's the, that's the part that you have to sort of think about is like, okay, it, you know, if a, if a student has some challenges, you know, whether that's sort of run of the mill ADHD or whether there are, you know, whatever it is, you know, or whether it's something that's, you know, more, that's more then, you know, you, you have to think about what that timeline is and are you, if they're about to leave, are you providing support in ways that can't be rep replicated when they get to college that they'll, need in order to succeed and how can you pull back on that and what's the timeline to do that so yeah. it, i mean there's there's like a cutoff point somewhere you know where you kind of have to step back even for a kid who needs a lot of scaffolding if they're about to go away now if they're not that can be a reason that they're not you know i mean think about that but also you know it's the same thing like push them to you know to to figure out like within the bounds of what's reasonable for them. Yeah, yeah. I think you, with this student population, sometimes we feel guilty about pushing them because things are a little harder, but you know what? They can surprise you sometimes. They really can. I've been surprised by my kids many times over the years, you know, where I thought they really needed any or they needed extra help. But if you give them a little bit of a push, sometimes they'll surprise you. And if they're still struggling, that does mean, oh, they need a little scaffolding stuff, you know, and you just got to know mm -hmm. when you got to keep trying to see when it's the right time. I, think. I mean, that's why it's such a balancing act. I mean, for every kid, like this sort of push and yeah. pull, like, okay, yeah. I'm going to let you go swim on your own. Okay, I see that you're struggling. This is not a situation <laughs> where we can let you drown. I'm going to throw you a life raft. <laughs> um, well, you're right we're going to sign up for more swim lessons. Like, you know, I mean, like you figure out, like you, you, yeah. you know, and then, okay, a month later, okay, yep, you can go in again. Like, you know, so yeah. you just kind of have to, you, you have to walk that balance Fine back line. and forth yeah. all the time and keep and yeah. keep it in mind it 
you know, keep in mind that you, it, you have to keep going because it's never going to stay the same. The goal is for it to change all the time, which I think that's part of the challenge. I think too, that sometimes parents have a lot of anxiety around this. Um, and just remember if you, your anxiety is, you don't want it to become your kid's anxiety. So keep an eye on that. Right. And if you're feeling really anxious, it doesn't mean they're not ready. Yeah. I always tell myself that my anxiety is not their anxiety. Like when my son went on this big trip, I was a little anxious (laughs) about it because he spent a long time in Jordan, you know, and we all know that it's not the best place to be Yeah, there's politically. And I was like, but my anxiety is not his anxiety, so. Well, and also like, you know, that (laughs) your anxiety doesn't mean he's not ready. Like it just doesn't. Yeah. 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 Okay. Did we answer that? I hope so. Yeah, I think so. Maybe. I don't know. (laughs) There's probably a whole book. (laughs) Um, Um, Do you want to do one? Sure. Um, okay, I'd love to hear about the balance of accountability versus flexibility in courses where I make the assignments, deadlines, et cetera. When is it reasonable to adjust because your child is sick, overwhelmed with another subject, or you just realize you were overly ambitious? And when is it important to stand in firm in the plan and encourage them, but let them uh, learn the hard way that a deadline is a deadline? I think with homeschooling, this is one of the great benefits of homeschooling and it's really good we always talk about balance in a student schedule it's so good to have a couple's classes that either you've planned and you're doing at home with them or they're doing on their own or whatever and then some outside coursework where they're responsible to someone else and i i honestly don't think there's anything wrong with if you see your kids super overwhelmed especially if they're just starting to get used to this like new setup to say let's pause this course for a little bit you know like like let's say you're studying for ap's or something and you still have a lot of history at home to do or something you can pause that for a little bit and let them get through the ap's and then just easily finish it up yeah that's okay i think because it's a benefit to homeschooling it helps students um i think if everything is really well balanced and they have a lot of free time and it's the middle of the year and they're still kind of struggling and not doing their deadlines and that i think it's a good place to test that out because it's you know low pressure yeah i agree low stakes low stakes for the student I think you have to just keep an eye on, you know, the push and pull, like, yeah. of the year, um, you know, a- again, like, in this case, you're the software, essentially saying, we only <laughs> yeah. did 12%, you know, yeah. and, and you have to sort of, I think you have to think about, okay, well, what's reasonable. And, you know, I also think, honestly, like, if a kid's really not getting it done, and it really needs to get done, I think you have to shift gears and either then you do kind of have to step in. I think it's hard because also like in high school, a lot of us are just kind of like beginning to step back. Also, like we want to step back. Like we don't want to micromanage our kid doing stuff. And yeah. um, I think we're, it, we're no longer in that, like, you know, magic learning with you kind yeah. of just mindset. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, it's tricky because then you're like, Oh, have to like literally and now I have this other thing that I do like I don't want to sit with you all day and have this sort of confetti time where you know I'm like just you know making you do this thing but like sometimes that's kind of what it takes to kind of get the wheels moving um and you know at some point you have to call it (laughs) yeah you do but one thing I wanted to just highlight here um if you realized you were overly ambitious, I do see that happening with our uh, with families sometimes, where you yeah. loved planning in elementary and middle yes. school years, and you plan <laughs> these great courses, and you bring in all these books and all these resources, mm-hmm. and so you get to high school and you do a really great plan for an amazing course, and you can't wait mm-hmm. to do it with your kid, and then you just realize it's way too much work. It is okay to cut some of that. Yeah, it I definitely agree. Is. And if, and if you have. Or if you sign your kid up for another course, we see this sometimes, and then you want to add stuff to it. Like, make sure you're not overwhelming your kid is the big takeaway. Like, if if you're planning too much Mm -hmm. or overwhelming them and then they can't get to anything, that's when you really need to cut back. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, yeah, you, I mean, yeah, how many of these, like, plans? I mean, we, we definitely had some like this, like. Yeah, I was like, oh, I don't know why I thought I was going to make you read seven books. Like, that was stupid. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was never going to happen. <laughs> that was never going to happen. Like, what was I thinking? Like, you know. Yeah. And yeah. then 
it's just like, okay, let's adjust. Uh, let's skip that one. Let's do that. You know, and it's still a course. Let's do like, an audio book, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of like the checklist, like for high school, especially like it doesn't really work for like an elementary school course. Like, I mean, not really, but like, for it's just like, okay, watch this set of documentaries or this lecture series, this great courses series, you know, um, do this MOOC, you know, uh, read this book, yeah. you know, write two papers, you're done, you know, like that's your half credit. Like, you know, it's <laughs> <There you go. laughs> like really short checklist, not like a checklist of like a million right. things and yeah. like every day, every day, do a little writing assignment with this. Like it just, it, keep it simple. Um, yeah. yeah. Simplify. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> okay. Parents of high schoolers who are at school mostly leave things up to the teachers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. I think there's some parents that don't do that. How do we have a great relationship with our kids and be the ones to nag them about getting their work done in time? What do you think? <laughs> that's, Jen, that's a very hard question to answer. I wish I knew um, the magic formula to that. Oh, yeah. No, we have all the answers for that. You don't. You have, I don't know. You, you throw snacks at them and hope for the best. <laughs> you bribe them <laughs> with whatever you have to bribe them with. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, that's the one thing I find as you get older and you have, especially as you're aging and they're getting older, is you, you get tired of nagging them. Mm -hmm. Really, really tired. I mean, I think having systems helps. Yeah. Um, having a making sure they're fed. I mean, that's not a joke. Like you really should throw more snacks at them probably. And, and, and get really good sleep every night because they're going good sleep. Like crazy. Make sure that they yeah. have time to be outside and get sunshine sometimes or, you know. Or time move, to do move their around. things. Yes. And time. Yeah. Because that's important. Like, yeah, it, that can't be like the punishment. You can't like take away the thing that they love doing. Like that's not a good, yeah. you know. Don't do that. I No, not, not. I mean, not it, oh, that's some, fire. It, yeah, yeah, I think it does. I mean, especially if it's the productive thing that they like, like, don't, you know, especially like if you take away like more and more of their time, and then the thing that's left is like, you know, doom scrolling or something like, that, you know, that's not yeah. good. Um, I think, uh, I mean, I think that all of that is important. Make sure that the reasons that things if something's not getting done make sure that the reason isn't anxiety isn't perfectionism isn't um that they're overwhelmed that their brain needs a break like you know and you know i guess don't go into it assuming that it's like a moral problem <laughs> like you know that yeah. it's a laziness problem i think most kids want to do well and you know and want to be successful so sort of go in with that assumption and i think most kids want to get through their school day so they can get to the things they love um, yeah mm -hmm. i think sometimes you need to really uh show them and demonstrate to them for a while what a schedule could be that could be help them be successful and then remind them yeah you know and then slowly step back you know like i'm not going to remind you every day I'm going to remind you a few times, you know, a week or something mm -hmm. until they're really on the schedule themselves and, and gain confidence. Once they have confidence that they can do it, uh, they, most kids will stick to it. I think it's fair to say, I mean, I wouldn't take away anything they love, but I do think it's fair to say like, you can't do it, you know, this thing until your school work's done. I mean, yeah. Cause you couldn't do it in school, mm -hmm. right? You can't be right. sitting there doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to say that. It's okay to say that. I think it's, I, I think it works better when you go in collaboratively, like, how can we fix this? Because we yeah. don't, none of us want to be in this place. None where, of us are happy. Where, you know, the parent is the nag and the kid is, you know, it, is upset. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And I would also say, you know, we love homeschooling, but it does not work for every kid. And if yes. you find yourself in the situation over and over again, maybe it's time to try something else. Yeah, which can be hard. I mean, sometimes you're kind of backed into a corner. Um, right. But, you know, I, I do think I, I see this arise more with um, families that are doing more at home or have more self-paced work. 
than I do with families who have outsourced classes and dual enrollment primarily, because that is creating us more of a school vibe. And sometimes kids need that a little bit more at this age. You know, this is an age where they're differentiating themselves. They're figuring out their own way. That's part of the independence piece. You know, it, it, I I mean, we don't want to say like, oh, you can't, you know, teach that at home anymore. Cause I, I think that those are still that, that provides cushion room and stretch balance to other courses. It it's some of the interesting stuff. We talk about that all the time, like, yeah. you know, and don't undervalue it. I mean, all of that, but like at the same time, some kids need you not to be the teacher. They need you to be the mom yeah. and they need, you know, and the relationship, like you need to prioritize that over whatever yeah. your educational goals are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I remember my youngest wanted all his courses outsourced. And I was like, he's my youngest. I was like, this is so sad. But you know, it worked for him really well. So. Yeah, it did. He thrived yeah. that way. He did. He did thrive. And we have a great relationship. So mm-hmm. those are both good things. Okay, here's another one. And then I think we may have questions on natural video. Do you have that up? I might. <laughs> okay, let me read this one real quick. This okay, is another yeah. financial pro, pro, uh, question. So we may... Um, answer this more next time but it does talk about drew which i said we have what do you make of the forbes college financial grades drew university has been on our list but it has d so i'm not sure how to interpret it also mullenberg college has received a downgrade by moody's recently Mm -hmm. um that's more financial what do you think i mean it is this is a little bit different than what we're going to talk about next month um I, I mean, it's such a sad time for, um, it's just such a sad time for colleges. Um, they are all, what we're going to talk about next uh, time. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> You're trying sorry. to see I'm the, just looking at the comments. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a sad time for colleges. I, I mean, I read, and I think I posted about this at some point, like I read an estimate that uh, these small regional colleges are closing at a rate of one okay. per week this spring, which is so sad. It's just sad. It's, it's yeah there's an enrollment cliff the fafsa debacle has made it worse um you know it some of this is demographic uh so i mean it did some, some of it families are references don't see, yeah yeah i'm reading yes. article after article about how young kids just don't see the value in college you know? right and i you know right now there seems to be a, a bigger move especially towards um students and families both preferring large state schools you know, flagships and sort of flagship adjacent yeah. kind of schools, uh, which yeah. are great. I mean, we like those too, but, um, you know, we also like these small schools. It just, uh, I mean, we visited Drew. What did you think? I love Drew, but one of the main things I loved about mm-hmm. Drew was the land. Yes. And the, and they're, and so they are having some financial issues right now. They're trying to sell off some of that. And yeah. uh, they're not allowed to, so they can't use, or they were blocked. I can't remember, was it the city or someone blocked them from making yeah. this big sale, which would have brought money in to the college. And so they weren't allowed to make this sale. And that was one of their big selling points. I mean, this land, it's great. Uh, they're in a tricky place right now. They're losing enrollment. They just made this big uh, thing with, what was it, Stevenson? Stevens Institute of Technology, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is a new program. I don't know how successful that's going to be. I mean, yeah. it's I mean, a great little school. Yeah, and the, not the only thing that they were talking about selling off is like the core campus or anything. You know, yeah. it's just the sort but of it surroundings. Was still blocked. I know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think this is like we talked about this when we visited Valpo that they had had to sell a bunch of art. Um, yeah, you know, for to and it's like, okay, is this? You know, that's a is that going to help them be sustainable or is it going to hold them back? You know, is it a band-aid, I, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. I think you, you kind of have to, um, uh, you just have to feel your way through on these smaller schools um, right now. I mean, having a lowish grade on Forbes is not necessarily a death sentence. Um, some, some schools have come back from that, um, like sweet keep your eye on it, though. Hampshire and yeah, but keep your eye on it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, one of the big things to look at is, you know, is has enrollment fallen a lot. Um, You know, talk to talk to 
you know, I think it's fine to put those schools on lists and then talk to people, you know, it's okay to yeah. sort of look at a school like Drew and then be like, okay, I think they're going to be there for a while. You know, even though they're struggling, I feel, you know, pretty safe about this and, you know, and go in. Um, other times you can like, talk oh. to the school too. And sometimes they try to hide it or gloss over it. I feel like when we talked to, you talked about about that and I felt their answer was pretty good actually. Yeah. I you thought know? it was okay. Yeah. 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 So it just depends how they're talking about the issue too. Yes. I think that's true. You you have to kind of listen poke around a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but I do think, you know, it's sometimes it's worth taking a risk if your kid wants to be at a school like this. Sometimes they give really good deals and, and sometimes they get the support they need. That exactly. Really some, some them. of these yeah. small schools. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, I did. It, sometimes it's worth it. You know, you, you may really yeah. believe in their mission. Um, the cost may be right. Um, there, there can be some reasons to take a risk. I mean, when a school goes under other schools do offer a spot. Now the, the yeah. sad part is that a lot of the time students, um, they struggle to transfer all their courses. Um, you know, some it, it's complicated. Um, but, you know, when, if a school does close, uh, typically for most of, you know, most good schools, they make deals with other schools to yeah. accept the credit. They just, they just don't leave the students stranded. It's not no, like it's close. You, it's like, usually. It's, usually. It's, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I don't know okay. if have any other questions. I can't tell on the other one. <laughs> I don't think we do. I just, here, let me look again. Um, I think um, I when I went to our group, I could sort of see. It was like a little bit tricky. Um, it, it It's set up a little differently. Um, yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It's, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yep. No, no questions. <laughs> I don't oh, know. We course. probably had no views okay. because of how we did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the recording will be there. Yes, the recording so, is there. So there unless, we go. unless Facebook takes it down, but say, Facebook did take down the video the other day. So we don't know. We yeah. we can apologize for Facebook, but we we have no control. Of it. Um. Yeah. I. Uh. Any Any final thoughts before um, we sign I off? I am pro. We are promoting our parent paperwork. Uh, oh yeah. Right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, if anyone's looking for templates for the upcoming uh, mm -hmm. application season, we have them with videos at our mm -hmm. website. Uh, simplify for you. Simplify the number four. Why are you? Why are yeah. you? Dot com. There's parent paperwork templates there. Um, mm -hmm. I have a new pro I have a new provider up called MothLearning.com. Mm -hmm. We'd love you to check out those cor courses that are listed. And I have a couple summer book clubs if anyone would like to join. And anything else? uh no i don't think so we uh oh i've got i've got room in my summer essay workshop so if yes you, if you have you a, a student who's graduating i help you just it's just for the common app essay um but i have a lot of experience with that so yeah and then um i wanted to if i can find it on my phone here in england mm -hmm. i wanted to tell everyone we have monthly facebook lives and our next one i think is june 7th it's always at two o'clock yeah. And I will post about it. It is no June 11th, Tuesday, June 11th at two o'clock. Okay. We'll do another one. And we will be late. So it's plan on Tuesday. <laughs> yes, we will. Right? Be. Absolutely. We That's just okay. our plan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in in real life, we're not. This is so, yeah. Okay. We're never late. <laughs> we're never late. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>